the things that I'm going to explain today are directly about this end time, these, these last days. First thing, I do want to establish this, and that is the question that we must ask, is how long is man's rule? How long is man's rule? From Bereshith chapter 1, it shows us six work days, then the seventh day, Shabbat, or Sabbath. Most people refer to this as the creation week. This is also speaking of the six work days as man's 6,000 year rule. The seventh day Shabbat is the millennial kingdom of Yahuwah, when Yahushua will reign from Jerusalem after his return. Okay, so the six work days are man's 6,000 years. A day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as one day. You know the scripture. The seventh day Shabbat is Yahuwah's, it's the millennial reign. But is there a second and third witness to this? Yes. Bereshith, or Genesis, chapter 6, verse 3. And Yahuwah said, My Ruach, or spirit, shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Another verse we're going to talk about is Tehillim, or Psalms, chapter 90, verse 10. The days of our years are as 70 years, and if by reason of strength they be 80 years, yet still the best of them is but strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Now, first thing we, some people ask is, do these verses contradict each other? One says 120 years, the other one says 70 or 80. Do they contradict each other? Something I have said many times, I, I've put it at the end of documents and emails, there is no scripture that will contradict another scripture. Not one. Now, there's many mistranslations and a lot of manhandling where man has change Yahuwah's word. But that's why you have to go back and dil diligently study. You have to search it out. And Yahuwah will give you the answer to it. It's in the Hebrew. A lot of the times. But no one verse contradicts another one. If it seems to, it's our perspective, how we're viewing those verses that needs to change. It's us. Can't change his word. His word is true. We're the ones that need to change. So if these verses don't contradict each other, how can they be explained? Let's first take Bereshith chapter 6 verse 3. If man's rule is 6,000 years, we take 6,000 and divide it by 50. Why 50? You that's familiar with the Jubilee cycle understand you have seven sabbatical years and after the seventh sabbatical on the 49th year the next year the 50th year is a Jubilee or a Yovel year. Yovel is the Hebrew. So every 50 years is a Yovel year, a Jubilee year. So if man's rule is 6,000 years and we divide it by 50 or every 50 years we show and you can see that it comes to 120 Yovel years. In other words, there's 120 Jubilee years or Yovel years in 6,000. So Bereshith 6.3 is actually speaking of 6,000 total years. It's talking about specifically the 120 Yovel years or Jubilees. But when you do the calculations, it's, it's showing the entire 6,000 year period. So that's a second witness. But how about Tehillim, Psalms? How do we explain that? Chapter 90, verse 10. Let's take the first part to 70 years. 840. I just pulled a number out of the air, 840. I'll explain it here in just a moment. Let's take a number, 840, and divide it by 12. Now, what's the 12? I will tell you that. The 12 is the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? There's only 12 gates in the city. There's no Gentile gate. There's no gate for the church. There's no gate for the Buddhist or any other religion. It's Israel. Only Israel has a gate. The 12 tribes of Israel. The sons of Yaakov. 
So we take this number, 840, and divide it by the 12 tribes. Equals 70 years. Okay, fine, but what is the 840? In 6,000 years, there are exactly 840 sabbatical years. Sabbatical. What is a sabbatical year? It's commanded in the scriptures, every seven years is to be a sabbatical year. It's a year that the land rests. It's also a year of release to, to a man who has sold himself to be a servant. Okay, maybe a man didn't have enough money, he couldn't support himself, so he sold himself for a period of years. When the, when the next sabbatical comes, he's to be released from that servitude. And he's also to go, not to go out empty-handed. In other words, the one who he was serving was supposed to, to give him a gift when he left. But every seven years is a sabbatical year, a Sabbath year. In 6,000 years, there are exactly 840 sabbatical years. Now, I mean, it's pretty easy to calculate, and I show that below. In 50 years, there's seven sabbaticals. Okay, every seven. Seven times seven is 49. Now, remember, the 50th is Yovel. We, we just talked about that a minute ago. But there's only seven sabbaticals in 50. There's 14 of them in 100. Now, what does the second part mean? It says, if by strength, 80 years. So what is that talking about? If we take the 840 sabbatical years that we just found, and add it to, now remember the sabbatical years does not include the jubilee or the yovel year. Okay? So if we take the 840 sabbatical years and add to them the 120 yovels, you get a total of 960 total set apart years unto Yahuwah in a period of 6,000 years of man's allotted time to rule the earth. So what does this mean? What can we do with this? You take the 960 years, and again, you divide it by the 12 tribes of Israel, and it gives us the 80 years, which is in the latter part of the 10th verse. So this is three witnesses that Yahuwah has given man 6,000 years to rule. Bereshit 6.3 speaks of the 120 Yovels, or Jubilee years. Tehillim, or Psalms 90 verse 10, speaks of the the 840 uh, sabbatical years, which is 70 per tribe, and then the 960 total set apart years, sabbatical plus Yovel, which is 80 years per tribe. Four. But you, O Daniel, hide the words and seal the scroll, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and da'at, or knowledge, shall be increased. Seal the scroll even to the time of the end. We're going to start with Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. We'll probably reread these few verses several times. I want to read them completely through once, and then we'll go over each one of these verses specifically in, in a lot of detail, along with a few other verses. The whole part of the end of this timeline is directly about the 70 weeks of Daniel, which is stated here in the chapter 9, verse 24. But the day and hour we're living in is the second part of this dual prophecy. Most people don't understand that Daniel, the 70 weeks of Daniel, is actually a dual prophecy. A lot of people have understood that it is speaking about in these verses when the first coming of Yehushua. When he came, he taught for three years, and then he died and was resurrected. Most people don't understand that uh, it's also to deal directly with the day and hour in which we're living. And has been for some time. It has been pointing towards that time, but most people have not understood it. They haven't caught it. Let alone some of the other verses to add to this. Chapter 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people and upon your Kadosh city, or set-apart city, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting Zedekah and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most Kadosh, or the most set-apart one. 
Continuing to verse 25, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Yerushalayim, or Jerusalem, until the Mashiach and the Gid shall be sixty-nine weeks, the street shall be built again in the wall, even in troubled times. And after sixty-two weeks, Yikharek Mashiach shall Mashiach be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Tsar that shall come shall destroy the city and the Kadosh place, or the most set-apart place, the temple. And the end of it shall be with a flood, and to the end of war desolations are determined. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the Brit, or covenant, with many for one week. And in the middle of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the offering to cease, and on the wing or corner of abomination shall be the one who makes it desolate, even until the complete end of the Alam Heze, or the earth, which has been determined and shall be poured upon the one who lays waste. Now that we've read over these verses, let's begin to break them down and look at them in more detail. Look at the first part of chapter 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people. What is the Hebrew word used here for weeks in this verse? And what is its meaning? The Hebrew word, Strong's H7620, the Hebrew word for weeks that's being used here is the word Shavua. Shavua. What does it mean? Some of its meanings is simply seven. Also, a heptad, which is a period of seven, as in days or years. A week. Or feast of weeks. A heptad of, of years. Let's, let's look at the word heptad there for a moment, as in years. A hept seven years. That is the explanation and the understanding for the first part of the prophecy of Daniel's 70 weeks. It's used earlier in the timeline. I go over this earlier in the timeline. Uh, again, that's uh, something that we can't get to today. What I want to show you here today is just the second part of the dual prophecy of the Daniel 70 weeks. Let's focus in on three of the meanings of Shavua. Okay, remember now all three of the, all the meanings we're going to show here is still the same Hebrew word, Shavua. So meaning number one, 70 weeks. That's what's in most translations. I think everybody knows what a week is. Meaning number two, 70 feast of weeks. Number three, the third one I want to look at is 70 sevens. All this is 70 Shavua, the Hebrew word Shavua. Meaning number one, we all understand what a week is. It's a period of seven days. Now that's not seven Shabbats. Okay, you can't count six work days on Shabbat and say that that's the only thing that can be a week. Yes, six work days on Shabbat is a week. That's true. But any period of seven full days is a week. How do we know these things? Can you prove it from Scripture? Yes, yes, they, they can, can be, be proven. proven. In, in Daniel, Daniel chapter, chapter 10, 10, start out in verse 2. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no desirable lachim, or bread. Neither came meat or wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all until three whole or full weeks were fulfilled. In the twenty-fourth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which was Tigris, I lifted up my eyes, and a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body was also like beryl, and his face the appearance of lightning, and his eyes the lamps of fire, and the strong ones in his feet like polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Okay, we know that this is speaking about an Amalek, or an angel. Okay? Let's skip down to verse 12. And he told me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day, from the first day that you did set your love, your heart, to understand, and to humble yourself before Eloah, the Creator, your words were heard. And I have come in response to your words. 
Verse 13, but the Tsar of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. But see, Mikael, one of the chief heavenly Malachim, or angels, came to help me, since I had been all alone with the Tsar of Persia. Okay? So what is it really telling us here? What is this about? We're talking about weeks. What is a full week? Those of you that understand the true scriptural solar lunar calendar, okay, you know what? When is the Shabbat? It's the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th day of every single month on the scriptural month, starting from being counted from Rosh Kodesh or New Moon. Now, you will never find anywhere in the scriptures of a Shabbat being on any other day. One that states specifically that that day was Shabbat or that you can count to any other day as a weekly Shabbat. All the weekly Shabbats in the scripture is always shown on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, 29th. What does that have to do with this? Remember, now it says in verse 2 that Daniel mourned three full weeks. This is only, the word full weeks here is only seen one of the time. And that's when it's talking about the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. You count seven full weeks. Okay, There's, I've got a teaching on our website. Uh, we see our website at the bottom of the screen. There's a teaching on the counting of the Feast of Weeks and the day of Shavuot. That is something that all of us have had to be able to understand what the scriptures is actually teaching us and the examples that's given in Yahuwah's word. So this is the only other time besides the Feast of Weeks that you see a full week. Okay, What's a full week? When would, if you fasted a full, three full weeks, what are you talking about? What's, well, what's a full day? It's from sunset until sunset. That's a full day. Scriptural day. So if a full day is from sunset to sunset, then what's a full week? It's seven full days. Simple, right? So we have three full weeks. That's 21 full days. Correct? But in verse 4, it says on the 24th day of the first month. As I was by the great river, which is Tigris. So what? He fasted for three full weeks, and then it was on the 24th day of the first month. Great. Remember, the 22nd is a Shabbat. Correct? Yes, on the scriptural solar lunar calendar, the 22nd is a Shabbat. This is two days after this, after the Shabbat. Yet, it's considered part of the three full weeks. How do we know that the 24th day was the end of the three full weeks? Three full weeks, again, being 21 full days, correct? How long was the angel, the Malik, waiting to take the message to Daniel? He stated in verse 12, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your El Eloah, your words were heard. And I have come in response to your words. But the Tsar of Persia withstood me 21 days. Three full weeks. See? Now, Daniel fasted three full weeks. Now, if this, if the 24th day of the month here was, let's just say, some people, let's just say that that was three or four days after he quit fasting, then the angel would have had to say 24, 25 days. No, he said 21. He, Yahuwah heard Daniel from the first day, but it took the angel, the Malik, 21 days before he was able to deliver the message. The end of three full weeks. Again, by it being the 24th day of the month, this is a is telling us this is a full week, but it doesn't end on a Shabbat. The Shabbat was two days previous. That is a point blank example of what a full week is. A full week, yes, it can be six work days on a Shabbat. Yes, it can. But most often, it's usually seven full days. Any, you can have three work days of Shabbat and three more days. 
That's still a full week if you're talking about any set of Okay, seven. we've established what is a week. It's a period of seven, okay? And it has to be a whole week, a full week. We'll get into more of that in a minute. I want to focus first on meaning number three, seventy sevens. Okay, remember this is still seventy shavua, the same Hebrew word. One of the meanings is seven, so seventy sevens are determined upon your people. Seventy sevens. Just think about it for a moment. Seventy sevens. Doesn't that sound familiar? Let's go to another scripture in the Brick Kadasha or the Renewed Covenant. Matanyahu, Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21. Then came Kepha, or Peter, to him and said, Master, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Verse 22, Yahushua said to him, I did not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. So a heptad is one of the words for Shavua or a set of seven and the Greek word here for Matanyahu 1822 the Greek word being used for seven is Hepta okay so what is the real point that's being made here what is Yahushua trying to tell us what is he trying what did he tell Kepha did he mean that you should take 70 times 7 which equals 490 is that Yahushua's point that we're to forgive our brother 490 times? If you take a notebook and you go and you make a mark every time your brother sins against you and you're counting up to 490 times, we've got a problem. We know that as far as forgiving our brother and we hope and pray between us and Yahushua and Yahuwah that there is unlimited okay in other words seventy sevens hmm sound familiar what is the, the hidden meaning that Yahushua is stating here is that we as Israel can be forgiven remember I did not say to you up to seven times but Greek heos up to or until seventy sevens we can be forgiven up to or until the 70th seven. This is in reference to the 77s that is stated in Daniel 9.24. Yahushua is speaking of a, of a specific time when the door shall be closed. Just as it was the case of Noah or Noah when Yahuwah closed the door of the ark. Okay? Today those who are watching are our be obedient to his word and are preparing themselves. They will be ready. But those who do not heed the word of Yahuwah will be swept away by the floods of false doctrine, by the floods of people, by the physical floods of oh, wow. men. Remember, meaning number two, 70 feast of weeks. I said I'd come back to it. So let's, let's look at this more closely. 70 Shavuah or 70 feast of weeks are determined upon your people. What is another Hebrew word for Feast of Weeks? Seventy Feast of Weeks are determined upon your people. First of all, you need to understand about the Feast of Weeks. We touched on it earlier. Every year, those of you who keep the feast days, the Moedim of Yahuwah, that we should all be doing as Israel, if you're part of Israel, if you're going to serve Yahuwah, you need to be keeping his Moedim, his feast days, his word commands it. A lot of people say that they're done away with. Show me the verse. Tell me the verse. If, it, if you show me the verse that it says, do not keep the feast days any longer, they're done away with, I, I won't keep them. The problem is most people don't keep them. They state that, but yet it's not in here. It never says anywhere. A lot of people says, well, the old covenant's done away with. The, the Old Testament, no. The, what do you think the, what they call the New Testament is built on? What did Yahushua use when he taught the people? He pulled out the scroll of Isaiah. That's the Torah. It's his word. It's the first covenant. There's only one covenant. That's the first covenant. 
the, the, what they call the New Testament is the renewed covenant. It's built upon it. It's built upon the foundation. The foundation is the Tanakh, or the, what they call the Old Testament, which includes all the Torah. The Feast of Weeks, each year we are to count, you can find it in Weikra or Leviticus 23, we are to count from the wave sheaf seven weeks. And then the next day, the 50th day, is Shavuot, which is the end of the Feast of Weeks. So each year there's seven weeks that we count. Now keep that in mind for a minute. What is another Hebrew word for the Feast of Weeks? I just spoke a second ago. It's Shavuot. Shavuot. What does Shavuot mean? Okay? Now think about this for a moment. A lot of us who keep the Moedim, the feast days, we call it Shavuot. We don't call it Pentecost. Pentecost is from the Greek. Yes, Penta means five. It's 50 days. Yes, it is. But the, the, the correct Hebrew word is Shavuot. What does the word Shavuot mean? Let's look at it more in detail. Shavuot is a combination of two Hebrew words. Shavuah, we've already went over Shavuah, meaning sevens. And Ot, meaning sign. Okay, Ot is the Hebrew word for sign. Shavuot literally means the sign of the sevens. What are all of these meanings pointing to? Seventy weeks, seventy sevens, seventy feast of weeks or Shavuot. As I stated before, each year we count seven weeks. On the next day we shomer or observe the Ascension Chag, Ascension Feast, Shavuot. Remember, each year has seven weeks. So in as pertaining to the second part of the seventy weeks of Daniel's, the dual prophecy, 77s is speaking directly of 70 years or 70 feast of weeks 70 Shavuot is talking about each year 77s each year we count seven weeks so talking to Kepha 77s up to the 70th seven what does up to mean what does until mean you're doing something until something happens. So what happens before the 70th week? We have to go back to Daniel, chapter 9, verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Yerushalayim until the Mashiach and the Nagid shall be 69 weeks. Why can Israel only be forgiven up to the 70th week of Daniel? Because Yahushua will return in the 69th week. In other words, the week before the 70th. And Kol Yisrael must be ready and prepared for him at his arrival in the 69th week, or the 69th set of sevens, the 69th counting of the Feast of Weeks, or Shavuot. Seventy weeks, 77, 70 Feasts of Weeks, 70 Shavua, remember the Hebrew word Shavua. When does this time begin and how does it pertain to this day and hour? Daniel 9.25, again, I know we just read it, let's read it again. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Yerushalayim until the Mashiach, then again, shall be 69 weeks. Okay, when is the 69th week? Seems like this is pretty important to know, wouldn't it be? I think so. When is the 69th week? The 70 weeks of Daniel, the second part of the prophecy, May 15th, 1948 A.D. This is the second time in 200 and... 30 slides, if I was able to teach this full teaching in its entirety, again, take about 12 to 15 hours, this is only the second time that I reference a Roman year. But this year is very important. The reason being is because it's recent history. This is something that is known and verifiable. That's the only reason that it's usable. May 15th, 1948 A.D., the land of Israel is proclaimed once again as a sovereign nation 
under its own rule. May 15th, 1948 A.D. This is the beginning of the 70 weeks of Daniel, the second part of the dual prophecy. We count from 1948 forward. We add 70 years to it. 70 counts of the Feast of Weeks, 77, 70 Shavuot. 1948 A.D. plus 70 brings us to the year 2018 A.D. or